Okay, so if we look at this slide here, you can see benefits of UV light exposure. Again, vitamin D production, nitric oxide, enhanced skin barrier functionality, and beta endorphin release for mood regulation. We can see that medically speaking, these different diseases are actually treated with UV light. In other words, doctors, you, even though they tell you to avoid it, then they also charge you for them to treat you with it. And again, all you have to do, it's free, you go outside, but psoriasis, depression, vitiligo, atopic dermatitis, fibromyalgia, and scleroderma. Then we have diseases linked to lack of exposure uh, to UV light, and so cancers, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, muscle weakness, autoimmunity, infection, asthma, allergies, bone loss, chronic pain, myopia, cognitive decline, and all-cause mortality. So hopefully what you're taking away so far is that you can't just take vitamin D and call it even. You've got to get sunshine, and one of the reasons why is you need UV light to do so many different things to benefit the health of your body. Now, beyond UV, let's talk a little bit about red light and near infrared light, and there's some of their benefits, because this is one of the other aspects to going outside. It's the non-UV exposure. So if we look at some of the noted benefits and research benefits of getting exposure to red and near infrared light, we've got stimulation for hair growth, Improved skin health are studies that show increased collagen formation in skin. It promotes cellular health for many different mechanisms, which we'll talk about. An improvement in circulation and blood flow. Reduced recovery time. This is recovery time both in trauma or injury, but also in working out if you're trying to recover better from workouts. We have reduction in inflammation, increases in fertility, and as well, reduction in pain. So there's a lot of benefits to being exposed to that red and near-infrared light that the sun provides absolutely free. So let's look at a few research studies on this particular topic. So you can see in this study, optical stimulation of mitochondria reduces blood glucose levels. And this was a study where they actually used red light therapies and showed that it actually had a, um, a blood glucose uh, benefit or a blood um, reduction of blood glucose benefit. So red light therapy at 650 to 800 nanometers stimulates mitochondrial respiration, shifting the metabolism. This, photo, photo, this photobiomodulation alters cellular respiration rate, increases membrane potential, ATP production, and sub subsequently reduces reactive oxygen species and inflammatory markers. Now let's Let's stop for just a second there because this is kind of a summary in the introduction of this particular paper. But what they're, what they're basically saying is that exposure to this light, this red light, actually increases your body's ability to make energy through ATP. Now, in order to get to ATP, what, what they've actually shown in, in research studies is there's this process called glycolysis or glycolysis which is where we're breaking down glucose, the carbohydrate uh, chain molecule glucose. And so in order to break that down, or, or rather ATP is formed when we go through that process of breaking that down. But what science is showing in, in, inside of your mitochondria is that there's a little specialized pump inside of the mitochondria that when exposed to these red lights, speeds up the rate at which you actually break down glucose. So it, it enhances or it increases the rate at which you'll break down glucose, therefore speeding up the rate at which you generate ATP, which is also known as energy. And how will that impact a person's health? Well, there's a lot of potential implication here. One would be if you're making energy more effectively and more efficiently, you're clearing glucose out of your system better. So in, again, in this study, we're, that's what they're finding is that it reduces blood glucose levels, but also by reducing blood glucose, you're less apt to store excessive glucose as triglycerides and put them in fat cells. But as you're making more energy, where does that energy, what does that energy do? Well, it goes to the, to the maintenance of the function of the body. You need ATP to heal, to repair. You need ATP to run the systems internally. And so by being exposed to red light, you're actually enhancing your body's ability to generate ATP from glucose. And so the, the 
later downstream impacts or effects are, are quite profound. So coming back to this, this results in improved sensory and motor function, including aged human color perception. In other words, it improves vision. And there are a number of research studies now that have shown that being, ex being exposed to red light actually can improve vision and can actually, in some cases, reverse some of the vision loss that is oftentimes blamed on aging. So very important benefit. So again, this result potentially has significant for human health, particularly in diabetes management and weight control. Here we have extended these findings. The original research was done on bees and invertebrates, but you can see here we've extended these findings from invertebrates into humans, demonstrating that a non-pharmaceutical, non-invasive optical intervention, optical being light, can be used to support blood glucose level management. How many of you have ever been to your endocrinologist or your GP and, and, and instead of being handed metformin, which remember what we said earlier, metformin was one of those medications that increases photosensitivity right here. It's the, the, one of the most commonly prescribed diabetic medications, metformin. But how many of you have ever gone to your GP or your doctor and instead of handing you a prescription for metformin, they gave you a prescription to go outside and get some regular exposure to the red light that costs you absolutely nothing except a little bit of your time. It's free. You just have to get out and do it. Now here's another research study on the benefits of red and near-infrared light treatment. So uh, in this case, this was a vanity study, if you will, but it was on the reduction of fine lines, wrinkles, skin roughness, and intradermal collagen density increase. So in this study, 136 volunteers participated uh, and were you know, randomized, and some were receiving the light therapy, and then they had a, a placebo group of those that weren't. But the results at the end of the study were treated subjects experienced significantly improved skin complexion and skin feeling profilometrically assessed skin roughness and ultrasonographically measured collagen density. So they did have some objective parameters. This just was not just a subjective outcome. The blinded clinical evaluation of photographs confirmed significant improvement in the intervention groups compared with the control. Conclusions, broadband polychromatic showed no advantage over the red light only spectrum. However, both novel light sources that have not been previously used for PBM have demonstrated efficacy and safety for skin rejuvenation and intradermal collagen increase when compared with controls. So again, this is specifically, they were using red light therapies. They weren't going outside to achieve it, but remember, I'm gonna keep coming back to it. You gotta go outside, it's free therapy. And then this study, week-long improved color contrast. In other words, this color contrast was visual improvements visual field improvement. So recently repeated 670 nanometer exposures have been used on the aged human retina, which has high energy demands and significant mitochondrial function decline to improve vision. We show here that three, or we, rather we show here that single three minute 670 nanometer exposures at much lower energies than previously used are sufficient to significantly improve for one week cone-mediated color contrast thresholds in aging populations aged 37 to 70 years old. So this is probably not gonna work for you to improve your vision if you're 12 or 15, but in the elderly or in the uh, middle age, we're seeing actual improvement in, uh, in vision. So again, these are just some of the research reported benefits of red lights and red light therapies.